This is Jack Fletcher reporting for Jack Fletcher Media Productions. I'm at the Motor Point Arena in Nottingham with the Commonwealth champ, people's champ, Lee Wood. Evening, evening. How you doing, Lee? Good, mate. Good. You all right? <laughs> yeah, I'm good, mate. Yeah, Cra crazy month for you. Absolutely crazy month. A lot's happened. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's, gone, it's gone really fast, hasn't it? Um, everything's just kind of snowboarded and since I signed with Dave, I've um, got my career back on track, you could say. Mm. Yeah, it's it's fast paced it's just gonna get a lot faster and a lot bigger. Um gonna make up for lost time obviously with injuries and uh, a few management issues. You know, everyone that's successful, um, kind of inspired me before reading a few stories, but if you notice like a lot of people that are successful, um they have a straight, clear mm. path to where they wanna to get to or where where they're going. Yeah. And I've read a few stories, a few like um you could say biographies. And I read a few, and one was a rocky one, you know, Sylvester Stallone's story. Yeah, yeah. When he uh, bought a script, sold his dog, and then bought his dog back. That yeah. was really, if you're not, if you're not read that, I've read that. about that, yeah. Yeah, but like, you know, you watch a, a lot of them, and no one has a clear path, and um, it's good to know that, because when you're going through your ups and downs, mainly your dance, um, it does kind of give you a bit of reassurance, like, no one has a clear path. People go through um, things like that on the, on the way to success, so um, just stay stay motivated mm. stay um stay uh keep your goals in sight and, and your dreams in sight and don't, don't give up on them don't give up on your dreams and just keep training on and eventually if you keep working hard and you're doing everything you need to do eventually uh the opportunities will come you've had a turbulent three years but you've had a change of fortunes um great victory by the way emphatic you know you look like you've not been out of the ring uh, completely dominated the fight and finished the job off and uh, there's a lot of people, well most of Nottingham are speaking about Lee Wood now and they're excited about his, his next up and coming fight and, and when that will be. Um, Dave Coldwell has came in and um, he's, he looks like he's doing a fantastic job but a lot of people are asking the question as well, what happened with Ingle camp? Why did you decide to, to leave Ingle? Billy Jones, Billy, Billy Joe Saunders left the Ingle camp, Kel Brook as well and obviously yourself so is there, is there a story behind that? Well, you gave me a few questions, and I'm trying to trying to try to drop more down to answer every single one of them. Um, I'll start from the beginning, from what I can remember. Um, nice, to know that everyone's behind me in Nottingham. Um, yeah, I mean, not a box for a whole year. Stepping in the ring of box for a combo title. Um, I know my ability, and I know I, I can. I know what level I can perform at. So it's just about um, dealing with the pressure on the night and. Uh, Obviously, it's, it's an opportunity, but if I'd have let it slip, it could have been waiting a long time, it might not come again. So, um, I know I, I had to win, but um, ability wise and, and performing, it's like I've not been out of the ring because I've not been out of the gym. Yeah, yeah. Stayed in the gym, stayed ready all the time, no matter what was going on in my life, personal life or yeah. professional life, um, I just stayed in the gym and I kept training. Yeah. And um, that's the best advice I can give to young fighters coming through that um, don't get distracted by things aren't yeah. important or sometimes are important but just whatever you're doing ups and downs whatever you're going through yeah keep training because things come up in life life's life, life can be cruel sometimes you can throw things at you and uh, you just got to stay, stay on, on the right track yeah um why did i leave the ingle gym um you know what i never wanted to leave the ingle gym okay um i turned pro there 2011 i was there before obviously he's got up in the brennan spent a lot of time a lot of time on me, I spent a lot of time with him doing things, um, but um, in the end, I think enough is enough for me with the fight, with the, uh, the getting the fights and the management side of things and the training. The training yeah. is brilliant, yeah. um, can't knock it. But management side, I just won't get in the fights. I thought, not deserved, but fights I needed. Mm -hmm. And um, obviously, Dave, Dave uh, is just completely just made, made me, made me realise what I was missing out on. Yeah, yeah. He, um, he seems yeah, like a really quite, great guy anyway. Quite, thank you, man. Yeah. I literally, I, I owe him everything. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think two weeks before the combo title was when I signed with him. <laughs> wow. So, yeah. Um, and walking out it, in front of all those fans at the City Ground, being a Forest fan, I'm a Forest fan myself, and that, that must have been quite an experience for you, Lee. Yeah, it's one I'll never forget. Um, Crazy, crazy. It's not just walking out. I've, I've been to the Forest Ground before, be previous to that, yeah, yeah. before fights. But um, when you go back as a champion, yeah, it's different. Wow. It's different. Um, and 
you walk out in the reception you get um, and I mentioned it when I posted but Lower Bridgeford just like screaming chanting. <laughs> that's yeah, what I said um, actually it's uplifting yeah. it's, it's a very nice feeling and um, yeah. I just thank everyone for getting behind me down yeah. there you know been a Forest fan for a long time and to walk out and get that kind of reception uh, it stays with you yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, you've come a long way. 2013 was my first Lee Wood fight. Obviously, we're friends now, but uh, back then I didn't really know who you were. Um, just went to watch a professional at Clifton Leisure Centre, and you came out in a cowboy outfit to Jake Bug, and um, you put on a great performance. Years down the line, you just won the Commonwealth belt, fighting for matchroom boxing. This is the time now where you're 30 years of age. You've got a few years left. You probably should have been at sort of world title level maybe two or three years ago because you know you're a great boxer you've got all the skills all the technique and um you're world class you must have your sights on, on big things now lee yeah i mean i just want to be tested um you know i've got a lot of ability and i've sparred a lot of good kids and home and you know, like the Lenores and yeah, yeah i went over to japan uh, this time last year i remember that um with the Inui brothers and uh, you know I know, I know what, um, I know my level, I don't know my level, but mm. I know what I'm capable of. Um, so it's just about getting tested in the fights to prove to myself how good I am, because I, mm. I, I don't know how good I am. Um, You're avoided quite you know, a lot, people don't want to fight you normally. Yeah, I mean, when you haven't got promoter though, you can't, you can't blame fighters, because it's, boxing's a business. Mm. Um, I had a lot of pull outs last year, but... At the same time, if I was them, would I fight me for the money that was being put up? Probably not. It's a dangerous fight. Um, but yeah, it's boxing as a business, but hopefully now I'm going to get tested and uh, mm. get to see myself. I get to try to figure out what level I'm at. Yep. Um, I've never really felt out of my depth in the boxing ring. Um, apart from my only defeat, but you want really skill and ability. It was more mm. other things that went around it and yeah. making the weight and experience and things. But did you have to lose quite a lot of weight quite rapidly then that fight? Just the way I did it. Um, but you learn. You yeah. learn, you know, I don't want to take anything away from Gavin because he's a really good fighter. Yeah, he's a good two, two world titles since, but um, yeah. yeah, you learn. But um, like I said, I've never felt out my depth in a boxing ring and even even sparring, I've never felt out my depth. So. Um, I'm excited to be tested. I want to be tested. Um, I've got a lot more to my game than skill and ability in boxing. I mean, I've got a lot of metal as well, and um, I'll probably be showing that in the in the in the coming in the coming years as well. Um, Lee, who, to show it. who do you want to fight next? If you could call out anybody to fight, who would you want to fight? It'd be the world champion. It'd be the world champion because they're at the top of the tree. Yeah. So you can um, you can pretty much gauge where you're at off the best. Best in the division. Okay. So um, obviously it's Warrington. What, I'd love the Warrington fight. It'd be a massive fight. But, Josh uh, Warrington, yeah. You can't. You can't just get these fights. You have to earn these fights. Exactly. Yeah. And um, you have to earn domestic, clear, clear up domestic clear. We've got the Commonwealth. Um, maybe later in the year, we'll see what happens with my friend Jordan. See what route he's taken. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I'd like to win the British and then um, open scores. So we're on location at the, at the Motor Point Arena today. Uh, there's a lot of fat fight fans in Nottingham want to know what the plan is next. Well, um, hopefully it'll be revealed soon, but um, I've got a fight open, open to be announced in the next few weeks. Okay. But yeah, this, this stadium, crazy. I mean, I used to come watch Flotchy as a yeah, kid. Yeah. I even boxed on his undercard. I boxed on his undercard against the uh, Yusuf Mike. I was supposed to box on the Butte Bill. Yeah. It's so upsetting. It's so upsetting. Classic I mean, fight that was. Absolutely amazing it was fight. One of my best nights. My career aside, it was one of my best nights in boxing. Yeah. Um, Fight Street Butte fight. Mm. So um, let me show you up. Let me show you where. I was stood. That's me. <laughs> so uh, if you can see down here. <coughs> right down here. Screaming, it was <laughs> yeah. And as a kid, I remember when he boxed his world, chart, world, world title, I was in the face here. It was a bar, just feel look. These steps, I ran up to these yeah. steps here. Yeah. And I, was, I was holding on to this bar here, screaming when he How old was you then, Lee? I can't remember, I can't remember, but I was young. I was young, and uh, no, this arena, I was seeing Frotch win British, Commonwealth. And world title here. It was quite funny actually. After um, after he beat Lucian Butte, there was an after party at um, Bed Club at, at Gatecrasher, 
and I, I wasn't even boxing then, I didn't know anybody, and I managed to sneak into it and got a photo took, taken with Frotch, which was quite nice. But uh, so yeah, it's a, it's a it's a it's a great time for you, Lee. Big things are happening, and uh, it, it's about time that you had some good fortune. Um, so we've got a fight announcement coming up quite soon. Then so. Is there anyone, anyone you wanted to thank in particular? Any sponsors or, or anyone you wanted yeah, to thank? Yeah, well, all, all my sponsors, um, new and old. Um, I've had Blueprint back me from from day one. Yeah. Um, just very loyal, and you know, um, it's good for them. It's going to pay off from my first fight up to now. Ups and downs, and stuck by my side. And hopefully, it's going to pay off for them now. Being on these big cards, on these big televised bills. So, um, my Oakfield construction as well. Last year when I was going through a uh, hard time, not getting fights, Sim Richard, he stuck around me, Mark, Mark Flint and uh, everyone down there, so thank you. And my new sponsor that's joined recently as well, PFS Thetics, um, mm. thanks for backing me because hey, boxing is a short, short career, mm. you only get a good 10, 12, 12 years yeah. at a high level, so you need to make the most of it and uh, these guys help me train full time, stay in the gym. Doing what I enjoy because I do, I do enjoy boxing. I love boxing. Mm. Like when things aren't working out, and you're not getting fights, and you know, the, the bad side of things. You go into a boxing gym. Mm. And it's just a bit of a release. Like you're, yeah. you're sparring and you're doing your bags and that. Totally. It takes is, yeah. you away from. Of course it Takes it you away from reality and takes you away from things. So, it's like uh, therapy in itself. It is. It is. And I love boxing. And at times when I want getting in, what I wanted out of the sport, I was putting in a lot more. But now I'm back to like loving it again. Watching, yeah. Because I went for a stage where I wasn't even watching boxing last year. I wasn't even watching. I didn't want to talk about it. My friends all, bo we all follow boxing quite yeah. closely. But I was coming to my fights since I was amateur as a yeah. kid. Yeah. Um, they all talk about it. And like, did you watch that? I didn't watch boxing. Is this when you had your injuries and you was carrying well, injuries I was around with you? And, well, this, yeah. this was actually when I was injury free and I was in the gym pretty much a whole day training and okay. waiting for fights and nothing was happening and. Uh, yeah, let's talk about boxing. And yeah. like, did you watch that thing fight? Did you watch that Lomachenko and Ice fight? It's like, didn't watch it. it sort of felt like you was falling out of love with the sport a little bit. Yeah, I just didn't, I didn't want to watch it. I didn't, it didn't bother me. I was like, I got to a point where I trained, because in my head, probably it's maybe it's a bit of my stubborn personality. But um, yeah, I'd always train because like I always know where I wanted to be. But I won't get, I won't get anywhere. What sparked your hunger again then? I think obviously moving, moving gym, but well, not moving gyms, but moving management, um, and getting fights just made me think, you know, I've been probably sat around too long waiting for something that won't come in. Yeah. But yeah, now I'm back in love with boxing again. Um, I love training, I've always, I've always loved training, like sparring and obviously the bits you don't like, like dieting and running mm, and mm. things but on the whole like I've always enjoyed it. Who would you say is your who would you say is your biggest inspiration in boxing from, from day dot? Because obviously you've been boxing for years and years through the amateurs. Is there any one particular boxer or person who's inspired you? It's gotta be Carl. It's gotta be Carl. It's gotta be Carl because when I was an amateur I was training with Carl before he turned pro, like mm. I was only really young. Um, we used to go down on a Sunday morning, there's a right gang down there. Is that Phoenix? Yeah. So there's like, um, obviously Frotch, Jason Yarnell, Dominic Travis, Lee Morris, mm. Ollie Newham. Lee Morris? Yeah, Ollie Newham, yeah. Some really good kids yeah. and like, I was only really young and I didn't really take boxing seriously. Like it was only about 11, 10, 11, 12. I used to go down, do a bit. <laughs> and then like, watching them guys train, like they, they really they really put it in. Yeah. Um, so yeah, obviously when Frotch, I remember when the first time Frotch came to the gym after he won uh, a medal at the world. I think he was the first ever person to win a medal, a medal at the world. So I mean, like, I think David A was next, like a few minutes behind him. Yeah. So I think he was first to get a medal in the world. Um, and he brought that medal down to the gym. And um, I used to see Carl a lot. And my coach mm. at the time, Mark Anderson. Mark Anderson, <laughs> said, oh, yeah. Get a signature. Great guy. Yeah, and Mark is, yeah. Been like a bit of a dad to me over the years. Yeah, so I um, said, oh, get a, get a signature. It's like, why? So, <laughs> and this, like, he's going to do this and do that. Yeah, yeah. It's like, what, he I said he's going to be a champion one day? No, he just said, yeah, he's, he's going to turn pro, he's going to do this. And he said, like, basically. Yeah. But I was like, well, I see him, I see him all the time, but I didn't realise. I remember signing this 
he signed something, an old boxing ticket from when Phoenix had a home show. I've got right. it somewhere at home. Right. From before he even turned pro. So to watch him anyway, to watch him turn pro and then um, first time boxing the arena, I think the curtain did not work well. I think it was all that side. Yeah, and then watching it wasn't completely full either. Okay. And then fight by fight. Go up. Yeah. Yeah. It was just, I remember walking in the first time through the whole thing. It was crazy. What he's done is phenomenal. Yeah. For a Nottingham lad. He's big in. For, for, he's one of the best British fighters ever. Yeah. And um, to be from the same amateur club, from the same little <laughs> village of Gedlin. Yeah. To take over the world, you can't, you can't get better inspiration. You can't. No, you can't. I totally agree. And to watch him do it fight by fight. And then obviously when I moved to Sheffield as well, um, I seen it all again with Kel. Kel um, had the British title and then, uh, yeah, I remember when you boxed at Hillsborough Leisure Centre. I think it was against Love Mountain Dew. I think it was. Yeah, I can't yeah. remember. But yeah. Um, yeah, to watch him do it again. Leisure Centre Stadium, first one. Yeah. I think it, was it Matthew Atten, Wall of Rovers? Yeah, I think it was, yeah. yeah. You, see that, you see that gap, you see him bridge that gap from... Um, Leisure Centre to Stadium. Yeah, yeah. Crazy, crazy. But um, I seen it. I can. I can see it being done by fighters. Like it's it's a really good inspiration and to see that it can be done. And yeah, it's all about the. Obviously, a, a lot of it's to do with talent, but it's all all about the, the dedication and the hard work as well, and putting in the hours of training. Yeah, it is. Um, fighters work crazy hard. Like mm. all the. There's no. There's no hiding. From the jump from the, the title level to the British and Commonwealth and European, yeah. it's just work ethic and how hard you want it yeah. to work, um, and that's basically the difference between the two. You know. I think it's fair to say you're coming up to your toughest period now. Though fighting for match room, there's going to be some big names in the hat. Um, next three to four years is going to be crucial for your career, and you've got the opportunity to cement your legacy. <laughs> In Nottingham and following the footsteps of Cole, because you, you're well on the way and, and everyone everyone sees it. Uh, I mean, what's your sort of? Where do you see yourself in the next sort of three years? Where do you want to be? Just fight by fight for me. Okay. Um, I don't want to put the pressure on myself because I don't need to. I mean, Dave's really good at talking to me about things like this before this fight and taking the pressure off myself. Like some of the things he was saying to me, I was like, makes sense. Like. For example, um, he was saying to me, um, basically, if you're fighting this kid in the sixth rounder, you're, you're in the phase. If he's fighting in the eighth rounder, he's fighting in the tenth rounder for no title mm. in the phase, just because there's a piece of level, level of metal on the line. Mm. It's like, so what? So don't put the pressure on yourself. Fight to fight. Yeah, that's it. And it's like, yeah, it's a must win fight in them terms, but every fight's a must win fight. Mm. If I box a German, or a kid that I'm supposed to beat and I get beat, then where am I at? Exactly right, yeah. It's a must-win fight. Every fight's a must-win fight. Yeah. So you put the pressure on yourself and the words he gave me right before I got in the ring and, and my coach as well, Ian Grant, like, he said, you, he said you're talented, like, you're so talented. And you just, you, they lifted me up the things we're saying. And they took the pressure off me and that's that's what I need to do for our next few fights as mm. well. Yeah, they're mm. important fights, but every fight's an important mm. fight. Um, what I want to do in the sport and uh, my talent and my ability, I just need to go out and do it. Mm. Put round by round in the fight, yeah. fight by fight in my career, and uh, yep. I'll go as far as I can go, uh, as good as I am, and uh, hopefully it'll show what level I'm at in the next few fights. Brilliant stuff. Well, it's been good talking to you, mate, and uh, I'm looking forward to hearing the announcement very soon. I'm sure the whole of Nottingham is very excited as well. And uh, enjoy the rest of your daily. Thanks, uh, thanks for talking to me. Hopefully you got everything you need to get and I come across all right. But uh, yeah, hopefully a fight announcement soon and uh, get it out there. Thanks a lot, Lee. Cheers, mate. Cheers.